So I got the new PS5 Slim in. It's not officially called PS5 Slim, but it's the reduced weight, smaller, new generation of the PlayStation 5. And I've had this for a few days. I have mixed feelings about it. When I pulled it out of the box, like right off the rip, the first thing I noticed was how much lighter it was. I've seen photos and leaks of this thing, but the weight difference was very substantial compared to the PS5 that I was originally using. Now, aside from its weight and size, the other very obvious difference is the design aesthetic. So it's got this kind of line that cuts right through the panel. So it's a quad panel system. The original PlayStation 5 was a, I mean, on each side, it's a single, piece, right? So this is one panel, and then this is a separate panel, but on this, there's four of them. There's one on the top and the bottom on each side. And I think they derived this aesthetic from the controller. Like if you take a look at the control real quick, this has a very obvious kind of, you know, split panel aesthetic, right? The white segments are separated. And I think that's the same kind of look they're going for here, where the different white panels are separated with this black gap in between. Now, when it comes to, I guess, slim versions of the PlayStations, I've always been aesthetically drawn to them. Like even though I've owned every single original PlayStation, I always buy the slim variants because they just look cooler and they're just like a little bit cleaner. This time around, I don't know. There's something about this that just, it just doesn't appeal to me as much. And obviously this is very subjective, but I don't like the fact that it's like a two-toned like material. Like the top is this glossy finish, but then the bottom is that matte finish, which is actually a little bit different from the matte finish of the previous version. But I don't know, it just looks a little bit cheaper to me. I don't love the look as much as I thought I would on a slim. So I'm gonna pop these panels off real quick just to show you what's going on here. Uh, the top ones come off quite easily. The bottom ones, I wouldn't say they're hard, but a little bit more work involved compared to the uh, the top panels. Okay, uh, so the first thing you'll notice actually when you remove this, uh, this disc drive, it is a removable disc drive and it's surprisingly easy to come. It's toolless removal. So I don't know if you can see, there's like a little arrow there, but there's an arrow and it just lifts up and it hinges off. So it lifts up and it comes right off. It's super fast to remove. Uh, so the way that the disc drive connects to the motherboard, there's a connector here on the back of the disc drive that just slots right into that socket on that motherboard. And uh, the way that you put it back in is you hinge it on the left side and, and it's done. No screws, nothing. And then at the top here, you can see the SSD bay. So this unscrews just like the original PS5 and you have access to the NVMe slot. So this one here, is seemingly compatible with anything that would have worked on the original PS5. Now, if you'll notice, the vent styling at the top of the new PS5 is pretty plain. There's no kind of uh, stylized exhaust venting there. If you compare this to the original PS5, this has like a very, it's very noticeable even when the paneling is all closed up. It's just, it looks really plain to me. So this is kind of like the front view of those vents and they don't exist on the new PS5. So my take on this is that it just doesn't look as good. I can imagine that the removal of those stylized vents can reduce the production costs of this new unit. And that's ultimately the goal of any kind of slim model, but not as nice looking. Before I open it up to show you the insides, I wanna draw your attention to a couple of things. Uh, the first is the size of the new PS5 is not actually that much smaller. Like when you compare them side by side, it's like a little bit smaller, but also if you had the D brand plates, like the dark plates, the size difference is even less noticeable. But I imagine D brand being D brand is gonna make some kind of crazy aesthetically pleasing shell for the new PS5 as well. Uh, the other thing in the box, it doesn't come with the vertical stand like the original PS5. It comes with the horizontal stand, which I think sucks. It's a pair of these plastic feet that you slot into the side, or I guess like the bottom of the PlayStation 5. And when you flip it onto its side, if you can look in the hole, that it's right, that's the vertical stand, or sorry, that's the horizontal stand. Come on, man, this just looks, this ain't the move. Now, you don't need to use a vertical stand. I feel like it's fairly sturdy in terms of its wobble prevention uh, without the, the vertical stand, uh, at least the disc version. I imagine the 
the discless version would be slightly less stable, but I don't think you need the vertical stand if you don't wanna spend that extra money. I think it's like 30 bucks for the vertical stand. Now in terms of the ports, it is a little different on the new PS5. The old one had one USB-A and USB-C up front. Now there's two USB-Cs on the front. There's no front facing USB-A. And then on the back, uh, they both had USB-As on the back and that still hasn't changed. But there's the, the layout and the positioning of the connections are a little bit different. All right, let's open this up. Now from my testing, my very crude testing, I don't think that the chip in the new PS5 is a new chip. Uh, the original like old school PS5 that launched with a seven nanometer fabrication, then it moved over to six nanometer, the Oberon Plus chip. I still think this is still using that six nanometer chip because the power draw was exactly the same uh, from all the testing that I've done so far. Okay, to get into this device, it's just a bunch of security torque screws. Just real quick here, this is the fan that's inside the new PS5. This one is a 19 blade fan made by Foxconn. I think it's different from any of the other kind of original PS5s. I've seen a 17 blade fan and a 23 blade fan. This is 19. And I don't think those ones were made by Foxconn. I think those were like, there was like a Delta fan and NMB I think was the other one. But yeah, Foxconn 19 blade fan on the new PS5 Slim. Okay, first things first, the power supply. It's still 370 watts. And I imagine that when you're trying to do a shrink like this to make the PS5 slim, this is one of the things you gotta tackle first because it's like, you gotta make it small. Okay, let's get to the juice here. This is the motherboard and the heatsink. So the top heatsink comes off. Uh, okay, the first thing you'll notice, there's a radiator and heat pipe that runs external. This is actually quite similar to, I think the last generation of the original PS5s in the sense that it just, there's something that runs on the outside. And then if you look on the flip side, that heat pipe runs inside and it tags the VRMs over here. And then on the back side, if you flip it, you can take a look at the updated thermal system on the new PS5. So they have a pair of radiators and a slew of heat pipes that run to the chip again. Now, I mentioned earlier that I didn't think that this was running a updated chip. And I have to stress, my way of determining that kind of conclusion was that when I ran, uh, when I just checked the wattage pull, right? Nothing was different between this version and the 1200 series PS5 from uh, last year. And that's very crude testing, because I feel like if it was a five nanometer chip draw or a five nanometer process now, it is possible that the Wattage is still the same, but doesn't output as much heat. But the way that I'm looking at it right now, it seems like the chip is the same. But at the same time, it also seems impossible. Like how are they cooling this in a smaller system with like a smaller thermal design? Like if you look at the heat sinks that we have here, these are basically the only three objects that are pulling heat off of the system, right? This radiator, this radiator, this radiator, and the heat pipes. And I guess like the shroud itself, that adds a little bit of uh, thermal dissipation, but the blower, it's pulling off the heat. Somehow it's able to cool all of this in a smaller system. Using the same chip, I don't know, something's not adding up. I feel like there's something I'm missing, but I'm the wrong channel to be coming to if you want to. This ain't 2D tech tips here, right? I feel like Linus, if he gets his hands on this thing, or when he gets his hands on this, he'll figure it out in a second. Okay, one area that I wanna draw your attention to is this section right here. These chips handle the internal storage of the PS5. So we have the SSD controller itself, we have the storage chips, and then we have the RAM for uh, this whole section. Now, I when I heard that this was like a one terabyte um, configuration. So the, yeah, I forgot to mention that. The new PS5 has one terabyte of storage. The old ones had 825 gigabytes. And the way that they had done it before was they had six memory chips, like storage chips that had a very specialized custom controller. And all of the old PS5s, it didn't matter which variation or which year you bought it, had the exact same SSD configuration and the exact same controller that custom build controller. And Sony talked about how this controller is very important. It was integral to what the PS5 was because it was super fast, significantly faster than what the Xbox products had. But it's different now. Now, from what I can tell, there's no difference in performance. But again, my testing is so crude. The only thing I could do was just like load up a game and time it. And the few games that I tested, the load speeds were exactly the same. Uh, very crude testing, but Something tells me there's more to this story than what I'm seeing here. Uh, but at the very least, 
it now has less chips, so I'm assuming production cost comes down. Uh, I, the controller has to be different. This is a different SSD controller than the original PS5s. Um, but as to how much it affects performance, I don't know. My guess is that it's going to be negligible because if developers had to kind of work around this and keep this in mind, you know, depending on which, you know, does a person have a PS5 or the new PS5, that'd be a little bit crazy. Uh, but there you have it. That's the PS5.